Welcome to the High Tech Freedom Podcast. This is a podcast where we bring successful tech sales professionals, thought leaders, and entrepreneurs to share best practices, insights, and lessons learned with other tech sales professionals. As a sales professional, the more we learn, the more we earn. Once we earn it, how can we put those hard earned commission dollars back to work to build additional income streams that will create the freedom we are all working to achieve? I'm your host, Chris Freeman. I'm a high tech sales leader, real estate investor, and lifetime learner. All right. Welcome to the High Tech Freedom Podcast. I'm your host, Chris Freeman, and I'm really excited to jump right into this next episode. Uh, I've seen my guest present at a number of uh, online sessions and uh, different uh, mediums out there. So as a sales pro, as a sales leader, you're in for a real treat today. So my guest is Larry Long Jr., and he is the founder and CEO or what he calls also the chief energy officer of LLJR Enterprises. He's really focused on sharing and spreading motivation, inspiration, and transformation. Uh, he also hosts a what he calls the Midweek Midday Motivational Minute, and it's a weekly live video program. In fact, I just listened to it right before we recorded this uh, podcast, so really nice work. You know, so wh- why have Larry on? Larry is an experienced sales leader and business professional with a demonstrated history of success in SaaS, software as a service sales. And he brings a unique perspective to the table and understands many of the business and life challenges that as high-tech sales pros, we all face. So Larry and I recently connected after I noticed he launched a new book, which uh, I haven't had a chance to, I've ordered it. It arrives on Thursday, but his new book is called Jolt, Get Zapped into Intentionality, Rediscover and Believe in Your Inner Greatness, and it just launched. So after this episode, go check it out. All right, Larry, welcome to the High Tech Freedom Podcast. Chris, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm excited to be here with the High Tech Freedom Podcast, where we can learn, earn, and invest. Love it. Pleasure is all mine. Well, hey, well, so thanks for joining today. So our interview right now is right after you finished up your weekly motivational minute that you call that midweek, midday motivational minute session. And your topic was on being thankful. And you run these every week. What is the goal behind these sessions? Yeah, I appreciate you asking. And I just hit my two-year anniversary. I think today was episode number 109. Wow. But uh, the whole goal, and, and it started right around the early parts of the pandemic. Watching the news, there was so much bad news. I said, why don't they just call it bad news? Because you watch the news and you feel down. At least I felt down. I said, well, what can I do? And I thought about going on video. I was scared. I mean, I got the face for radio. Even though I got a smile for a mile, I got the face for radio. But one of my many mentors, Morgan Ingram in Atlanta, said, Larry, you got to get on video. He said, I'm going to tell you what my mentor told me. If you don't do it, you're being selfish. It's not about you. If you can have an impact, a positive impact on just one person, you've got to do it. And when he told me that on a Friday, that following Wednesday, I'll never forget, I went in my backyard. My kids were both doing the, the, the learn from home. So they were at the table. I went out there. It took me about 13, 14 takes to do my first. And I called it the, the midday, midweek motivational minute. And I talked about say yes to you. And I just shared what my thoughts were. And the feedback was great. And I said, well, let me do it next Wednesday. And the next Wednesday, and now 110 weeks later, We've got the midweek, midday motivational minute really designed to help provide right at the, at the middle of the week, provide people with that, that, that jolt. I hate to call it that, but I love to call it that. Give them that jolt to help them really thrive through the rest of their week. Uh, I love it. I love it. You know, and I just translate that into some of the day-to-day work that I do. Sometimes, uh, you know, I'm not looking forward to getting on my team meeting at 8 a.m. on a Monday, but after I get off, um, it's a, it is a little boost of energy. You know, we've talked about the business, we got our head in the game, and now we're off and running. And what you're doing is a little bit different, but it's the same thing. It's it's early in the day, some great positive messaging, some insights, some thoughts, something to think about. 
and get you through that, uh, you know, your hump day, get you through the rest of the week. That's right. And we built a community where really I love it because it's not about me. It's about the folks that join every week live, the folks that listen into the recording and they chime in, they tune in. This year I've done an alphabet soup. So we're on the letter T and we just talk about what are some uplifting words that start with T. And and today it was thankful, but it was also tragedy. And how do you turn tragedy into triumph with everything that's going on in this world? There's so much to be thankful for. And there's so much that we can do to leverage our talents, to leverage our treasures, to really transition and transform other people's lives so that we can all thrive. So it, I don't know if you can tell, but it's a, it means so much to me. It's a great joy. And that's the basis of my book. I took my top seven themes and that was my book. Yeah. I love the, uh, I love the passion behind it. And, you know, on that topic of thankful, you know, whenever there is a, you, you mentioned tragedy, whenever there is something that, that happens, that's it, just horrible and unfortunate. Uh, you know, it's also a reminder that, Hey, don't wait do it now. If there's something that you want to do, do it today. If there's something you wanted to say, say it today. Um, you'll all, you know, why wait when you can do it now? So true. So true. Well, so, um, you know, prior to kicking off your own business that you you're running now, which is your professional speaker, uh, coach, you work with large organizations, sales teams, and so on. Prior to doing that, you were leading uh, a SaaS sales team. Uh, why did you leave and uh, why did you leave the role to go do your own thing? Yeah, so I, I have so many great experiences in sales leadership, manager, director, and it's great to be able to impact the team, impact the organization, impact the clients, the prospects, but I wanted more. And I hate to say it that I'm greedy, but I am greedy and I'm greedy to serve more people. So my team, I think I managed nine reps, and then our whole team was 19, which was good. But I'm not good with just being good. I want to be great. So now I've picked up the mic full time, and I have the opportunity to speak with sales teams, whether it's Salesforce, whether it's Microsoft, Hootsuite, VMware. I now get to go into these large organizations, small organizations, and impact their sales reps their sales leaders to help them elevate their game to the next level. When I say game, I mean personal first, which leads into professional. So just being able to impact more lives, I guess they call it at scale. That was really the genesis of my transition. And I hate to say it because we're getting the theme here, but once again, Chris, I was scared to take that jump. But having my wife, having my kids, having my mother, my family, my sister support. I lost my father five and a half years ago. Having his lesson still in my head, go for it, little Larry, go for it. You can do it. Really helped to spur me to where I am today. And we hit our one-year anniversary in March, and we've been able to impact and really touch for the positive so many different lives. Nothing beats it. Nothing beats it. Yeah, I, I love it. And it's so interesting because, you know, at times I've also held myself back because of fear, uncertainty and doubt. But once you do it and you're in it, you have no time to even be scared. It's so funny. Once you're actively engaged, it is the last thing on your mind. Yeah, funny how we do that. Um, all right. Well, let's transition a little bit. So from your your time leading sales teams and doing your coaching and working with some of those organizations, you've had a chance to see a lot of sales professionals. Um, you know, what do you see that holds sales pros back from performing at their highest level? There's a lot of things, but I'll give you the top. And it really, it starts right here. For those that can't see me, it's the heart. And from the heart, it goes to the head. And from the head, it goes to the mouth. And from the mouth, it goes to our actions. So what do I mean by that? Belief, self-belief. And it's kind of like uh, you talked about that FUD, not Elmer FUD, but the fear, uncertainty, and doubt. I played baseball at University of Maryland, go Terps. And one, one of my programs is strikeouts. They're a part of life. If you don't have a growth mindset, if you're not creating a safe space for yourself to be unsuccessful, some people might call it failure. It's not a failure unless you give up. If you give up, then it is a failure. But if you stick with it, If you learn from the unsuccessful attempts 
and you keep trying, whoa, you can be on my team all day, every day. So really it comes down to that inner belief in your heart, in your mind. What words are you saying to yourself? Chapter one, what story are you telling yourself and believing? Don't believe the hype. And I'm guilty. I'm, I'm not preaching to anyone. I'm living this every day. That voice that says, Larry, you're not smart enough. Who do you think you are talking to these enterprise sales execs at Microsoft? You, you ain't good enough. And then there's the other side that's saying, Larry, you do have something of value. You do have something that can impact and assist them if they're open to it. So what separates the, the good from the great, the average from those that are dynamite, I really believe is that internal belief because we're all skilled. We've all got some sort of uh, fundamental uh, skill that we've been blessed with. But what do we do with that? Do we believe in it? Do we act in it? Or do we kind of let, let it waste away? And that's one thing that I see a lot is that inner potential kind of wasting away because folks don't believe it. Mm -hmm. They're telling themselves, I'm not good enough. I'm not smart enough. I'm not good at sales. I'm not strong enough communicator. Yes, you are. And it's a, pro it's a process. It takes time. I don't know if Alan Iverson listens in. But we're talking about practice. You got to practice your craft if you want to be good. So yeah. I hope that helps someone that needs to hear that message right now. You are good enough. I love it. Well, maybe I'll forward the episode over to Alan Iverson. I actually met him once. Yeah. Really, actually, funny enough, really, little side story. Um, I was trying to get a signature from him for my little uh, nephew waiting outside the bus. He was the last guy to board the bus. Tried to hit on the hat. Big bodyguard just steps in front, intercepts me. He's like, that ain't happening. And it's like, oh, bummer. I couldn't deliver for my little nephew. So I'm walking back to the hotel. This is at the Biltmore in Arizona. And the bodyguard comes back up to me. He's like, look, um, Alan loves to support um, kids. He just doesn't want to do it out in public because he, he'll get hammered with people giving signatures. He said, give me a room number. Uh, give me what you want signed. We'll take care of it. And he sent over all kinds of stuff to be uh, signed. It was so cool. Wow. Yeah. I, I love to hear stories like that because it's the human element. Yeah. That, that's so heartwarming. Love it. Yeah. So back to back to selling. Um, so you touched on something. So along with that belief that success, sometimes you don't see, you do the little steps, right? You don't see necessarily the outcome from it, but it's all iterative, iterative, right? It's building on top of building on top of building. But I, I, what is your take on kind of the, taking that longer term approach to keep yourself going? So you understand that, hey, I might not get the results today, but what I did today, what I do tomorrow, what I do the next day, hey, 365 days from now, it's significant. I don't like to run long distances, but I realize it's a marathon. It's not a sprint. I was a sprinter. Yeah, we get done. No, we're in the long game. So like you said, it's trusting the process as well as being a lifelong learner, being open to growth opportunities. And it's that stick to itness. I, I know that when I was looking for talent, I want people that aren't going to wave the white flag and give up at the first sign of a challenge. Hey, I'm, I'm looking forward to the challenge. Oh, I don't have those skills. There's a gap. I'm going to step in and embrace the gap to learn so that I can then earn and invest. Yeah. So essentially that, that that's really what separates those that are on that upper echelon. They have that understanding and they know that, Hey, maybe I'm not the strongest up until now, but I'm committed. And that commitment, when you're committed, and, and in order to have commitment, you've got to have a burning desire. I think the great Les, uh, Les, Les Brown says, are you hungry? And for me, I'm always hungry. I mean, you are what you eat. That would make me a fried chicken. But are you hungry for the process? Are you hungry for putting in the work, the hard rowing, knowing that you might not get results immediately? It's kind of like my wife. She's a gardener. I'll never forget at our old house. She said, baby, come here, come here. I'm like, what? She's like, look back there. I'm like, did a deer run through the fence? She was like, no, I planted that, that seed two years ago. I've been watering it. I've been putting that, that, that funky fertilizer on it. And now it's come to bloom. And 
she was overjoyed. Happy wife, happy life. I said, Hercules, Hercules. But essentially, that's what we're doing as sales professionals. We've got to plant that, those seeds. And we don't know when they're going to sprout. Uh, oftentimes, we don't have success on a monthly basis, on a quarterly basis. And we get discouraged not realizing that, hey, everything takes time. You plant enough seeds and you plant good seed. Now you have the opportunity. Maybe it's two quarters from now. Maybe it's two years from now you're going to get the results, but you got to stick to it. Mm -hmm. So that would be my biggest thing is stick to it. Hey, I'm not sponsored by Nike, but I think they say, don't quit, just do it. (laughs) That's right. Well, so, you know, such great advice, Larry, because if you're, um, you know, if you're a field salesperson, you ha- also have to have some thick skin and you ha- as hard as it is, you have to have some self-confidence to have that long-term view because guess who's not going to have most of the time, guess who's not going to have that long-term view? Your sales manager. They're going to have a quarterly number. They're going to hammer you on that quarterly number. And, you know, you may have ups and downs. But if you are constantly planting those seeds and you have a plan, a long-term plan, um, and you can communicate that plan, sometimes that'll carry you over those rough patches it, that we are all going to experience. Oh, sure. when, you, when you look at someone's journey line, there's ups and there's downs, there's twists and there's turns, there's highs and there's lows. I want to learn each step of the way. And a lot of times the learnings comes from those lows. What can I be doing differently? Next time that I come up to, to the plate, oh, I know that they're going to throw me a curveball. I'm going to be ready for the curveball. I'm going to make the adjustment and I'm going to adapt to make sure you might have fooled me once, but you won't fool me again. Yeah. Hey, so shifting gears then a little bit on just kind of the uh, the market of sales. So you're involved and I believe you're the, the chapter chair now for the uh, National Speaker Association chapter in the Carolinas, um, you know, which is a great organization that helps people elevate, elevate their speaking skills and advance their business skills. And you had talked about a conference that was coming up where one of your speakers is going to talk about how sales is changing. Now, I haven't heard the talk, but um, from your perspective, how is sales transforming and changing and how do reps need to adapt to it? Yeah, so Chris, I'm the director of programming. So I got to bring in Meredith Elliott Powell, who's a sales speaker. She's the author of a book called Thrive. Essentially, how do you thrive through all the turbulence and chaos? And from a sales perspective, I I haven't heard her presentation yet, but I heard it's dynamite. I can't wait. But there's so many things that are changing in the marketplace, going digital. Are you on LinkedIn and how are you showing up on LinkedIn? How are you connecting with people LinkedIn in the social media side of things? Folks and and prospects and clients, they're getting so much information without you as the sales professional. Mm -hmm. How are you managing that? How are you leveraging that? How are you maintaining and growing relationships in this virtual slash hybrid environment. Things have changed. If I'm a field rep, I'm no longer (laughs) giving dap in person, taking folks whining and dining. It looks a little bit differently. I've been talking to a lot of organizations about what can they do to make sure that they show up and that they seize the opportunity because some people look at it and say, oh, woe is me. Oh, I'm not where we can't. I'm unable to. It's impossible. Well, the word itself, impossible, just says it. I am possible. But you got to put your thinking cap on. You got to be flexible and you got to adapt. So I encourage reps to continue, boom, boom, to keep a tight, a, a tight pulse on whatever's going on in your industry. I know for software sales, the landscape is changing so quickly. Going digital, the, the nature of relationships, the nature of you growing. If you go out there and all you want to talk about is product, 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 what problems are you solving? I think they call it jobs to be done. From your prospect and your client's perspective, what jobs to be done are you helping to serve them with? And are you able to communicate that message even when you're not there? When they go back and they've got to share it with the other stakeholders, what does that look like? Walk me through 
your prospect journey? What is it like to try to buy from you? I know that sometimes it's, it's you make it difficult. No, don't make it difficult. If you make it difficult for me to buy from you, I'm not buying from you. Yeah, well, you know, you think about it, right? It's, it's if, if you keep, if you've been working for 20 years, right? And you are still doing it the same way you were doing it 10 years ago, even five years ago, um, you're probably at risk of falling behind. You always have to be innovating. If the, how the customer buy, if how they're buying, if that's different, you need to be adapting. And I love your example of how can you still be messaging and communicating with them when you're not there? So, you know, the thing that I always worry about is, right, we send over, you know, a team member sends over a proposal and maybe we're not at the level that we need to be. And that proposal is going to go up to that level. Well, if they have questions, how can you still be addressing those questions when you're not in that boardroom, when you're not in that C-suite? And, you know, I've seen reps do creative things where they sent over a short video summary of their proposal. Maybe they did a one-page executive summary. Um, you know, a business document that can go up with the request for capital or request for purchase, what, however you do it in your company. Um, I think Larry's point about how can you still be there when you're not so that person can see the value to the business is critical to getting your project or your deal approved. I love what you mentioned about creativity and leveraging video. I actually worked with a group, uh, a team out of New York last year, and they did a team video with folks that were in the Bay, folks that were in Austin, folks that were in New York, and they put it together so nicely. It just differentiated and it showed up. I, I tell my wife I love her all the time. She says, I know you tell me that you love me, but show me how much you love me. Go ahead and fold those clothes. She's like, even though you don't fold them the right way, just make an effort. So it's the same thing in sales. We say that we care about our prospects. We say that we love our clients, but oh, your actions speak so loud. I can't hear what you're saying. What are you doing? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love it. And by the way, sometimes old is new, right? Sometimes to differentiate yourself, you've got to go try something that maybe was an old way of doing it. And I'll just give you one example that I personally try to, I need to do more of, which is the good old fashioned thank you note, right? Um, it, it's almost lost if you try to send it an email because they're so hammered in email. But hey, how often are you actually getting mail that's not junk mail? You know, good old fashioned thank you note goes a long ways. In a sea of black boxes, I don't want to be a black, black box. That's right. I want to stand out as a green triangle. I, I want to be a purple trapezoid. If you can say the word trapezoid and not crack a smile, you're better than <laughs> me. I want to stand out from the rest. Uh, I love it. Well, hey, as we start to wrap up here, Larry, um, how important is giving back in your sales career? It's everything. It's everything. There, there's a philosopher. Actually, he's a rapper. His name is Young Jeezy. And he's got a song that I like. It's called Go Getter. And we love working with go getters. I love playing baseball with go getters. I love having them on my team. But Bob Berg, and I've got his book on my bookshelf. He's got a book called Go Giver. I really love a go giver. So the importance of giving back. And for me, when I think of sales, my definition is twofold. Number one, it's a transfer of energy. And you don't have to have, in the words of the great philosopher J.J. Walker, dynamite energy like me, but you better have some sort of gumption. You better have some sort of juice and let it loose. The other definition is we're playing matchmaker. We're matching whatever we have, a product, a service, a thought, an idea with someone else's needs, their wants, their desires, their challenges, hopes, dreams, aspirations. If we're not giving, if we're not serving, if we're not understanding what those are, we're flying blind and it's all about us. Don't be a me monster. You better be about your prospects, about your clients. And you better be asking the question, how can I serve you? How can I be a resource for you? What keeps you up at night and how can I address that? And even if you can't address it, hey, I know somebody who knows somebody that can address that. You come back to me when we can hit, when I can go ahead and go to work. So that's what true sales, I think that's what true sales professionals do versus some of this other stuff that sales amateurs do, where it's all about me, 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 me. Oh, they got that funky commission breath. Oh, yeah. get some Tic Tacs <laughs> in there because it is funky. Yeah. Well, you, you may have, some people may have heard that term, be a connector, right? Um, when If there's an opportunity, let's say a customer, you just touched on it, right? But let's say they mentioned something. You can't help them. 
But if you can come back with somebody else that can, it doesn't matter how minor it is. Oh man, you've just moved up their memory ladder significantly. That is what the top 20% do. Big time serving others and keeping others ahead of self. Now you, you got to take care of self, but if you really keep the focus on your prospects and your clients, you're, you're going to enjoy a ton of success. Yeah. So Larry, I want to put you on the spot. So you threw it out there in another interview about a long-term goal that you have of building some type of center, I think for youth. What, what is that about? Yeah. So 7% and seven was my baseball number. 7% of all revenues for LLJR go to the Shorty Long. Shorty Long was my dad's name. He ran track at Maryland, long jumper, triple jumper. He grew up in Baltimore City, only one from his family to graduate high school. So essentially in his honor, by December 11, 2025, that'll be the 10 year anniversary of him passing on. We're going to have either broken ground for a community center or and or we're going to have a, a fund to support inner city youth that want to go on to higher education, but don't have the monetary means. We're going to be able to contribute scholarship. So that's my little thing that's really hopefully a big thing that's going to impact the future because I think it's that important. And it's one of those things, put your money where your mouth is. I hear you talking, Larry, but we've got money that's being in, it's being diverted into a savings account so that December 11th, 2025, we're ready to start contributing to real people that want to further their education and make an impact in this world. So that, that's that's my why. That's in addition to my kids, my beautiful wife, my family, my father's legacy. I'm, I'm taking the baton from him, stick, and I'm running that race to make sure I can pass that baton on to others and they can pass the baton on to others as well. So we're trying to make a, a big impact on this world. Yeah, that's great. That sounds like a fantastic uh, program. Well, um, Larry, is there anything else that you would like to share with the listeners? Yeah, I mean, right now it's so timely. In my book, it was really designed to just impact one person. But what I found is that there's so many people that are stuck in a rut. And, and, and May is mental health awareness. I want to call out that it's okay to not be okay. And I want to encourage you and let you know that I care. And I strongly encourage you to let someone know that you're not okay. Because if you don't let people know, people just assume that everything's hunky-dory. And sometimes, and I'm guilty, we put on this facade, we put on this smile for a mile, when really internal things aren't great. Well, they're not going to get any better if you don't tell somebody, if you don't give someone the opportunity to help you, to assist you, to guide you where you can get to be a good place. So I just want to let everyone know out there, you are loved, you are cared for, and I just encourage you that if you're struggling, let someone know. Yeah, that's that's great. Especially, you know, it's you know, for the the typical male that's out there, you know, you'll never see it. You know, they won't say anything. You know, they'll put on that facade. So, yeah, that's yeah. Thank you for sharing that. Yes, sir. Well, for the listeners, I'm going to give you a homework assignment. It's not graded. Ultimately, it's up to you to take action, but. Uh, your homework assignment is please follow Larry Long Jr. Pick up his book. And, you know, if you have any nagging thoughts about why you can't crush it in your in your role, uh, and we all have those thoughts. They're, you know, they're there. It's how we squash them is, is really what matters. But if you have those thoughts, you'll pull value out of his book. So please pick it up and uh, give him five stars on Amazon. Um, drop them a note. If you found a nugget and share what that nugget is, he'd really appreciate it. Larry, I want to thank you for sharing your thoughts today. Best of luck with your year and your journey to build the uh, foundation of the center. I love what you're doing. Keep it up. Chris, thank you so much. Truly my honor, my privilege, and my pleasure. All the best. Thank you. Thanks again for joining us today. To get more sales and real estate tips, you can subscribe to our newsletter at hightechfreedom.com. You can also join our private Facebook and LinkedIn group that is exclusively for sales professionals. If you found a nugget of good information in the podcast, 
please subscribe, give us a positive rating, and write a review. If there is a topic that you would like us to cover in the future, please send us a note through our website at hightechfreedom.com. Until next week, make this your best week ever. Music